My name's Lon Foster. I'm an associate professor at the University of Virginia, and my practice mainly focuses on patients who have plasma cell disorders, so basically, or mainly multiple myeloma and um, amyloidosis. I'll be presenting an abstract during this meeting on the, some subgroup analyses for the phase three ORIGA study. And basically what that's looking at, or I should say what the ORIGA study is. The ORIGA study was a phase three study that um, enrolled patients who were post-transplant that were MRD positive um, and had achieved a very good partial response or better. And they were um, not exposed to CD38 monoclonal antibody. So those patients were randomized to receive uh, daratumumab plus lenalidomide maintenance versus lenalidomide by itself, which is the standard of care. And um, what we're looking at is the MRG negativity rate at 12 months. So that's what that was looking at. And so for this meeting, we'll be looking at the subgroup analyses and seeing what the benefit is of adding dare 2 map to lenalidomide um, in all different subgroups. So by patient um, demographic characteristics, disease characteristics, and also by um, cytogenetic risk features. Looking at all the different subgroups, it seemed that adding dare 2 map to lenalidomide maintenance seemed to provide a benefit in all the different, so whether they were standard risk or high risk patients, and we looked at that by a lot of different ways, by ISS staging, um, or by the different cytogenic risks that that patient might have um, as part of their cytogenic profile, I guess I should say. And so um, that was basically what has come out of these subgroup analyses. So it's in those patients who had not received daratumumab in, as part of their induction treatment right when they were diagnosed. So this is really kind of looking at what is the benefit of doing these two drugs together in the maintenance setting compared to what is the standard of just Revlimid by itself. And so with daratumumab, um, there are increased infections and that is not uncommon. So that, that, that is one um, additional thing that we saw, but that's not, um, different from the other studies that were done. I think that in the subgroup analysis, what they did was we looked at um, younger patients, so patients less than 65 or older patients, 65 and older, and there wasn't any additional safety concerns in the different like age groups. And also looking at the black population, there wasn't any additional concerns with the addition of daratumumab. So basically, look like more of the patients achieved MRD negativity at that 12 month mark compared to patients that were just treated with lenalidomide by itself. In the um, preliminary analysis that was presented in Brazil earlier this year, um, what it showed was that 50-ish percent of the patients achieved MRD negativity versus about 18 percent um, with just lenalidomide by itself. So it's clearly an improvement by adding that additional drug. I think just longer term follow up, you know, this data is we're looking at not all of the patients have completed their 36 cycles of treatment. And so we need longer term follow up to see how these people do, I don't know, a few years from now and looking at sustained MRD negative rates.